friends good morning and welcome to another episode of the mahabharata podcast this is your friend shankar narayan signing in last week i was down with bad throat and fever so could not do the episode sorry for that this week i'm back with episode 4 of the cast french mahabharata as i said is full of messages and in the entire journey it often speaks about doing your duties well that is what is the essence of karma yoga that krishna tells arjuna in the bhagavad gita at the end it also give examples of the mess that is created when one does not do his or her duties at the right time shantanu about whom we have been discussing for the last couple of episodes is one such example in the last episode we saw that shantanu in his attempt to find the source of her beautiful smell was led to a lady finally he found that the source of a good smell was a lady this lady was doing the job of helping people cross the river yamuna and reach the other side in the boat so she 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 used to run a boat where she used to help people move from one side of the river to the other side and her name was satyavati so shantanu had this beautiful smell he started searching for the source of the smell and finally he ended up seeing satyavati satyavati was the daughter of a fisherman actually when satyavati was born she did not have this very good smell it is believed that she smelt like a fish and for a long time she smelt like a fish until once when she was doing her you know job of running the boat uh, once sage parashar took the services of her boat and on the journey she requested the sage to help her get rid of the smell so then sage parashar said that he would be able to take away her smell and for that she will have to give birth to his baby and satyavati agreed and the baby she thus gave birth to was none other than the veda vyasa who wrote the mahabharata that we are talking about so that's how she got relieved of the fish smell and had acquired the divine smell that shantanu smelt now so as soon as shantanu saw satyavati she was she was a very charming lady so shantanu fell for satyavati and her charm he went to her and asked if she could marry him this fellow had a good life with a son who was you know grown up and ready to take throne it would have been apt to think about his son's marriage at this time rather than thinking about his marriage now this is where shantanu started creating lot of mess anyways he made a marriage proposal now to satyavati already made so you can't help it and satyavati said see you are a king you are coming to me with a marriage proposal you are a king i can't deny your proposal but i also can't accept it straight away without my father's approval so she was a very you know wise lady she said okay i can marry you but only if my father agrees so shantanu said okay fine your father's approval let's let's take your father's approval shantanu went to the fisherman the satyavati's father and asked his daughter's hand then the very old dangerous phrases started haunting shantanu again i have a condition you know this is what haunted uh, shantanu also in the case of ganga and you know, she said i have a condition which you have to agree and the same face came back the fisherman said he would agree if shantanu can accept his condition this time shantanu was cautious you know he had learned his lessons from the previous encounter with ganga so he said you first tell what your condition is and then i will decide whether i should agree to that condition or not the fisherman then said that he would agree for shantanu's marriage with satyavati if shantanu agrees to make a child born to satyavati as his successor that is as the next king shantanu was shocked and disappointed after listening to this he he knew he can't do that injustice to devavrata he he loved devavrata he loved his son devavrata so he did not want to do that injustice to devavrata so he returned home with a broken heart 
and he said okay this is this will not work out this is some stupid condition you are coming up with i can't do this to my son and he went home with a broken heart see we all know that human brain is a very crazy thing especially when we all carry some weakness i think all of us would have faced this there's a very chance that the weakness would haunt us by overriding all our logical reasoning right but i think logically we know something is right something is wrong how should we be how should we not but still if we carry some weakness that weakness will still override our logical reasoning and then haunt us sometimes we ourselves don't like what we are doing but we feel that we are doing it out of our own control right that that's what is weakness and that's exactly what happened to shantanu here though he knew it was a very rational decision he made to have not accepted the fisherman's proposal his weakness started overtaking his reasoning and what happened usually the face is the index of your mind and his sadness and his weakness started showing up on his face devavrata was a very intelligent guy he, he was a learned person well educated upon everything he was very intelligent he was a very intelligent person and within a very short time he realized that his father was worried about something you know he he could see the small change in the behavior uh, the way shantanu was talking the way shantanu was behaving you know people who are very close to us can catch even a very small change in our behavior and they will figure out quickly that okay there's something wrong so devavrata you know loved his father upon that he was a very sharp guy so he immediately caught shantanu that there was something wrong with this fellow so he went up to shantanu and asked him what the matter was shantanu was not really ready to speak out openly but at that same time as i said his weakness was you know overriding all his reasoning so he said devavrata my son i am a king for a king having only one son he is more or less like not having any son at all so that's what my worry is so the, he stopped there he did not say anything beyond that but again devavrata was a very sharp fellow he realized oh, okay there is some other story hidden here some something else that he is unable to talk about so we need to figure out you know all the good bad ugly or beautiful businesses of big shots who will know all that it is the personal secretaries maids their drivers you know their housekeeping they will know all the right wrong you know, good bad beautiful ugly all the businesses of uh, the big shots even in today's world right that's what we see <laughs> devavrata knew this very well so he went straight to the charioteer of shantanu and asked him what the matter was you tell me where did father go why is he like this for past 3 or 4 days what's wrong so the charioteer narrated all the story to him that uh, shantanu met satyavati then they went to fisherman's place but he did not know what happened he said we went there we do, i don't know what happened but shantanu came back sad out of their house and since then he is sad so devavrata learned about shantanu's encounter with satyavati and his father so he now knew what to do so he immediately asked the charioteer to take him to satyavati's house so he met satyavati's dad there and he requested him to you know marry satyavati to shantanu the fisherman told about his condition to devavrata and immediately devavrata said okay i'll give up my throne this is what it is this is nothing for me i give up my throne for the sake of my dad's happiness my dad will be happy with this marriage that's good enough for me i don't want to be the next king i don't want to be the king at all i give up the throne i promise that a child born to satyavati will become the king immediately did this promise imagine in today's world here if somebody said you know to get another marriage done to your father or give up all your wealth and name fame whatever you are going to get we are going to say go to hell but you see devavrata was that's why devavrata was devavrata it did not end there 
द फिशर मैन सेट ओके नाउ यू मे गिव अप यू आर अ वेरी नाइस गाई सो आई सी यू हैव लॉट ऑफ लव फॉर योर फादर सो यू आर रेडी टू गिव अप योर किंगशिप आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट यू आर अ वेरी नाइस पर्सन यू मे गिव अप नाउ But what about your children? You are going to get married one day. You are going to have children. So they are going to, you know, take the kingdom from my daughter's children. So eventually, it's the same thing. It's that we are only postponing it, postponing the problem by one generation. It's not a permanent solution. And this is where Devavrata took the first of all oaths. He said, "Okay, this is what." your problem is he said i vow to all gods and five elements that i will not ever marry in my life the fisher man and satyavati were stunned for a moment they thought at the second level of the promise at least devavrata would give up but devavrata even more quickly than what he did his first promise he said okay this is your problem I promise that I will not marry the entire life and I will always stand as support for whoever is the king of Hastinapur and it is this oath of Devavrata that got him the name Bhishma Bhishma means one who makes tough promises and keeps it so oh, that is more important not just one who makes tough new year resolutions in the way we do it's someone who makes a tough promise and keeps it whatever it is we will see what are the problems bishma will face due to these promises he faces hell lot of issues and every day every time the issue comes and like you break your promise this going to be easy you break your promise going to be easy once in i will see it in coming episodes Satyavati herself will come and say no you please stop your promise i i want you to take a back foot from the promise you have made and you know break your promise bhishma never breaks his promise and that's why he gets the name bhishma one who makes tough promises and keeps it it is believed that the entire demi gods from the heavens showered praises on Bhishma Devavrata and called him Bhishma that's how he got the name Bhishma Satyavati and her father was still stunned looking at the oath that Bhishma took then when she came back to her senses she immediately walked up to Devavrata and then she said see i am going to marry your father now you have taken such a big oath definitely i am going to marry your father and once i marry your father you're going to be my son but before i get married to your father i want to do one thing i want to touch your feet before i become your father's wife because once i marry your father i'm going to be your mother then i can't touch your feet but today i am not yet married to your father so i want to touch your feet you are such a great man you're such a great son nobody can take this kind of an oath this kind of make this kind of a promise for the sake of his father's happiness You are such a great man. I want to touch your feet, and then she falls to the feet of Bhishma, and they say, "I am definitely going to marry your father." And Devavrata immediately goes back to palace along with Satyavati. He, he takes Satyavati along with him to the palace, and Shantanu could not believe what he was seeing. He was shocked, and he was looking, you know, trying to understand what's happening. And then Devavrata. goes to him with satyavati and say here you go this is what you wanted this what you were sad about now you can be happy i have got satyavati to you you can marry and from today you are my father you are my mother he made satyavati stand next to shantanu and he fell to their feet shantanu was now his weakness is satisfied so suddenly his rational thinking came back he realized what would have happened he understood bishma has made this promise everything and immediately shantanu was very very you know he started feeling the guilt now that just because of his weakness bishma had to make such a huge promise and give up everything so he said uh, son you have 
done such taken such a big promise for my sake what am i going to do uh, devavrata said nothing i am fine just be happy that's all what i want and then shantanu said no 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 i i want to give something to you so i use all my meditational powers that i have acquired and i will give you one boon that you will die only when you want so you you cannot die until you wish to die and say okay now i am ready to die on that day you can die you will not die until you wish to die and go away so that's the boon i give you so that's what they call as ichcha mrityu he will bishma has a ichcha mrityu whenever he wishes he will have the death so shantanu gave this boon to devavrata bishma on from that day he respected satyavati more than what he respected devi ganga and he followed all the instructions and we are going to see that this person bhishma is one of my most favorite characters in mahabharata he did everything for the sake of hastinapura that that was a region that they were ruling so i always say that the first message of patriotism comes from mahabharata and that's from bhishma we will see how patriotic bhishma was how much he loved his his region his nation we how much he loved the place he was born in and he did everything in his life that he could do to save card hastinapura so we're going to see all these details in coming episodes and for today i leave you here with the tough oath of bhishma have a good day have a great week ahead sarve janaha sukhino bhavantu See you next week with another episode of the podcast until then it's bye bye from your friend Shankar Narayan